Good afternoon, everyone. You are listening to The Dean Malik Show here on WWDB 860 AM. Every Friday at noon, we come to you from City Line Avenue with our unique conservative perspective on local, statewide, and national issues of concern to the people of the Delaware Valley and beyond. Each week, we bring in guests from throughout our region, and we aim to not only educate and entertain you, but we also aim to build a community of engaged conservative citizens. It is our goal to build the conservative base throughout southeastern Pennsylvania and to restore and revitalize all that has made the United States of America the land of the free and the home of the brave. We've got some great guests here today from Philadelphia, Bucks County, and Montgomery County, and to tell you more about them, I'm going to turn it over to my good friend and co-host, Don Beischel, Jr. Also today in studio joining us are Andy Meehan. Andy has declared himself as the candidate for the upcoming 2020 Republican primary in Pennsylvania's 1st Congressional District, challenging incumbent Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick. Andy is a staunch supporter of President Trump, a small business owner of a registered investment advisory firm, and has been a Bucks County resident since 1983. Hey everybody, welcome back to Dean Malik Show. Our toll-free call number is 888-329-3306. We got a great panel of guests here today. And I'm going to start with the guy who's running for the biggest office here and the first one to the studio, my friend Andy Meehan. Andy, why don't you tell us a little about yourself, your background, and why you're running for Congress in the 1st Congressional District of Pennsylvania. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks, Dean. And uh, Don, thanks for having me on the show. And uh, I enjoyed working on your campaign back in 2018. Uh, That was my first foray into politics. I'm a private business owner in Bucks County. I've lived in the district for 32 years, 20 of that as an independent financial advisor. And uh, I was sitting back about two months ago watching what was going on in Washington, D.C., and I'm a patriotic, you know, a passionate American. And uh, I was disgusted by what I'm seeing with this lurch uh, leftward by the Democrats and their embracing of socialism and their uh, ridiculous obsession with identity politics and watching uh, our representative up in Bucks County uh, not standing up to it, basically acting and looking like one of them. And I said, you know, somebody's got to stand up and do something about this. So I decided to put my talents and energy to work. And so I'm running a campaign of my own as a financial advisor. I've worked with corporate executives, firefighters, widows, retirees, you name it, every type of person in Bucks County, I've worked with them. Uh, I understand their financial situation completely. And um, I understand how the policies coming out of Washington impact the way they earn a living, pay taxes, budget, invest, plan for the future. And uh, they trust me to help them make good decisions with their money and their insurance. I, too, is a victim of Obamacare. And so I feel like I'm one of them and I understand the issues. And I want somebody in Washington that's going to fight and stand up for the Republican values of liberty, uh, opportunity for all and uh, justice and fairness. So that's why I'm in the game. So a conservative challenge to our moderate middle of the road Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick. Absolutely. Okay, Andy, we'll talk more about that uh, as we go forward. Now I want to go back to Andy Meehan. So Andy, uh, you're running for you know, very important position. Um, right now, Republicans are in a minority in Congress, but hopefully we can change that. Or hopefully. That's, the, that's, the, that's on the agenda for 2020. Trump is at the top of the ticket. You're yep. running in 2020, not 2019. That's correct, yeah. So you're getting an early April start. April 28th, 2020 is the primary. Okay, so that's the big decision day um, in, in the 1st Congressional District. And the 1st Congressional District is in the entirety of Bucks County and a little sliver of Montgomery County. And we talked about this before on other shows, but it was sort of judicially gerrymandered. Yeah. Um, it used to be configured a little bit differently with a different part of Montgomery County, which was more conservative, the Indian Valley area. And it's now been changed so that it has a different part of the county of Montgomery County that's actually more Democratic. Imagine that. Right, exactly. And it's a Democrat majority Supreme Court. Yeah. So. Um, You're running in the primary, so your audience right now are the Republican voters. Now, what is your platform that you are running on? Yeah, thanks, Dean. Uh, There are three pillars to my campaign, Dean, that are going to be – that all the the policy, uh, you know, things come out of. Uh, The first one is liberty. Uh, I believe that the biggest threat to our country, our republic – 
uh, is not the tone or the civility uh, of people in political discourse. I believe it is the growth uh, in the size, the, the power, and the scope, uh, the big black hole of Washington, D.C., sucking everything down into Washington. Uh, it's given us $22 trillion in debt. It's given us Obamacare, and uh, it needs to be clipped back. Uh, the, the growth of, of the federal government uh, crowds out uh, the individual's right to liberty and freedom to pursue happiness and success as they see fit. So liberty is a big uh, is a big. So uh, limited pillar. government is a big component of that, and that's exactly. a, that's the gold standard for conservatism. What's the next pillar? Yeah, the next pillar is opportunity. Uh, I believe that the motivation and the dignity that people get from being able to find a job and work and learn how to succeed uh, and to have something that they make for their own and that they don't have to unfairly share the fruits of their own labor with uh, people that the government think are more worthy of it than them. So uh, opportunity, uh, economic opportunity for all. It's all about jobs. The Trump economy is roaring. We need to keep that going. And that's a big part of my so, campaign. So well. what I'm hearing there is a, me is a message against redistribution of wealth and tax taxation, let people keep the majority of what they earn so that they can reinvest it, grow their businesses, and create jobs. Another solid conservative position. And you said there was a third pillar as well? Yeah, the third pillar, Dean, is justice. Uh, we've all been watching what's going on out of Washington, D.C., the selective enforcement of laws for certain political friends of people at the top and certain political uh, opponents of other people at the top. And it's uh, not the equal treatment under the law. And the, the republic cannot stand when some people get treated differently than others. And I want everybody in America to get equal treatment under the law, and that's justice. So those three pillars are what I'm going to stand for. So, so if there, in other words, if there are people out there leaking, violating national security and things like that, it shouldn't depend upon their partisan affiliation or whether they're part of the so-called deep state, everybody should be held accountable. Yeah, right? correct. What we're seeing out of Washington right now with what's coming out of this Spygate investigation, the abuse and targeting of President Trump by the FBI and other, uh, you know, deep state actors down in, in Washington, uh, the Republic can't stand this kind of thing yeah. if it's not addressed. And, and you, I'm sure you saw that uh, Comey was referred for, for prosecution, but it was declined. So um, it's good. It's a fight. It's a fight to see people held accountable. So that's a, another an equal justice under the law is another significant. Yeah, component. hopefully, yeah. hopefully they're going to get him for a bigger charge than just uh, hiding his notes or taking his notes home and, and mo removing classified material. Uh, I think there's bigger things that he's involved in, and I hope that's coming down the pike. Andy, uh, it's just on. Uh, just question for you. Now, how are how are you planning on approaching the registration disadvantage in the district uh, because obviously the mainstream media loves to attack conservatives and so they try to paint us as the uh, horns and tail uh, party yeah. so in 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 the first congressional district we're out register republicans are out registered by about 12,000 votes yeah. so what what is your strategy on winning over some of those independents and moderate democrats well, uh, my first uh, priority is obviously winning the Republican primary. Uh, the election in 2020 will be won based on how the independents vote. Uh, it is my feeling that by educating the public and, and focusing them on, on the good things that the Trump administration is doing economically that affect people on the ground in PA1, that we'll get those independent people because we're focused on the issues that matter to people, not these silly uh, you know, uh, things that are based on phony claims of bigotry and racism that are being ginned up uh, against conservatives because the other side really has no other things to run on. So that's what they do. They pull the race card out on us, and, uh, and we're sick of it, and we're... And people people sniff that out, Don. They know what's yeah. going on. Yeah, and 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 really, uh, Dean and I both agree on this that elections are basically won at the kitchen table on economics. Yeah, and and so if you can. Uh, uh, tout that message of, of a economic prosperity that's a that's a strong point to use absolutely yep. it, and that that kind of turns to the, the final point that i was going to ask you here so there's a lot of um dissatisfaction with our current representative in the district among republicans yes uh i had him on the radio twice but the first time i had him on we took him to task pretty hard for his uh, voting with the Democrats to condemn Trump based upon what we believe is a false narrative That's right. of racism, which is very unhelpful. Um, and you could potentially win. It would be unprecedented, but it is possible. I am going to win. Right. People are fed up. Okay, so let me ask you then. So if you win, uh, you know, in the last primary, um, there was 34% against Brian Fitzpatrick to vote for me. Yeah. Um, and let's say that ratio is reversed and you wind up with the 66% uh, of the vote. Yeah. And there's that 34% that voted for Brian Fitzpatrick. 
you're going to need that 34%, plus you're going to need independence. What will you do to keep faith with those Fitzpatrick voters who voted for him during the primary? Well, I think uh, that I am giving them what they really want and what Brian has not given them. So Republicans are Republicans. There are certain uh, absolutes that we stand up on on principle, and those things are the things I'm running my campaign on. So uh, I think it would be very easy for Republicans to, to line up against a real line up behind a real Republican agenda instead of what they had had to stomach for the past you know two and a half years. Right, and so what I'm what I'm getting at really is if those individuals in a contested primary, and it could get a little bit heated. Sometimes people get very attached to their candidate and you have to mend fences once it's over, how would you convince them, and some of them are moderates. We like to believe in the Republican Party there are no moderates, but there are some moderates, and you'll need them to vote for you instead of the Democrat. How will you convince those people who are actually aligned with Brian Fitzpatrick after a contentious primary to come on board one team, one fight, and oppose a Democrat in November? Well, I think uh, the way that I feel about it is that if if people really like Brian Fitzpatrick's record and what he's done in the Congress uh, over the past two and a half years, then they should vote for Brian Fitzpatrick. Uh, But if they're not happy with it, if they're not satisfied with what he's been doing, then they should look at what I am saying and look at my history as a uh, private business owner who's not going to Washington to go along to get along. I'm there to stand up for principles and what Republicans actually believe in, and I'm going to go fight for it, and I won't be dissuaded, and I promise the people of Bucks County and Montgomery County I won't let them down. I will go there to fight for what they believe in. And you'll invite all of the Republicans to support you if you win in I, November. I fully hope that the Republican Party will unite around a candidate that actually stands up for what they believe in instead of getting divided by having to get behind somebody that doesn't deliver what they believe in. Unity is much needed yep. in the party one way or another. A house divided cannot stand. Yep. So that's your position, Andy Mann. I think I think it is a conservative position. There's a lot of dissatisfaction with what Brian Fitzpatrick is doing, um, and, um, and there's a lot of time ahead of us to see what happens. But that is a message that I think will resonate with a significant number of voters. I hope so, Dean. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> Andy. Did you have something you wanted to? Say? Yeah, thanks, Dean. I just wanted to uh, encourage all of your listeners to go to my website, Meehan2020.com, and you can see there all the activity on the campaign. Uh, We'll be coming out with a new issues tab next week, so all the voters can see my positions. And uh, we just hope that the Bucks County Republicans will come out and support a candidate that is in support of Trump. That will be an asset to Trump to win Pennsylvania back in 2020 and keep the White House. I think that seems to be the overarching message now. Uh, that just seems to be the overarching message that everybody, tr- Donald Trump's the top of the ticket. It's not 2016 anymore where people, there's room for standing in the middle of the road. He's on the top of the ticket. He's running for re-election. And the economy is the greatest predictor of re-election for every single president in the modern era. And whenever there's positive economic growth, presidents are re-elected. And there is staggering positive economic growth right now. So it looks very good for Donald Trump. So I think that the Republican Party is going to have to sort of be Republicans. Be Republican, right? that's right. And now, now, Andy, me and um, what role, if any, do you think the federal government would have to play in the opiate crisis if you're elected? What do you think would be your plan of action? Well, I think uh, that the we've been pathetically weak on this border security issue. So I do think the wall needs to get built. And I think we need to beef up the infrastructure regarding uh, ports of entry, uh, where a lot of these drugs are coming in either over the border being carried by people, uh, or being uh, put in containers and other things that are getting them in the country. So we need we need a strong uh, border security regime. And I think uh, the local communities are the ones that are best uh, able to handle these things. I, I think the less things that are run out of Washington, D.C., and the more things that are pushed down closer to where the services are going to be paid for and rendered is what we should be focusing on. Let the communities come up with these because the people closest to the ground know best on how to solve the problems. Guys, we're running out of time here. I want to thank all of our guests for coming, but I want to give you each about you know a minute or so to just give your final pitch. Tell everybody your website, where you're at, what they can do to support you, starting with Andy Mann. Yeah, thanks, Dean. Um, uh, Meehan2020.com is the website. Uh, Be on the lookout for uh, local events that I'll be appearing at. Come on out. Go to the website. Sign up to contact. uh, Send us some money. we got a big uh, – the Fitzpatrick gang has a big war chest of money that we'll be going up against in the establishment. So the grassroots people, uh, Republicans in PA1, uh, I'm going to stand up for you, and I hope you'll do the same for me. So thank you. 
you got a full thanks, slate of Andy. events coming up. Thanks, Andy, for coming here. All right, thanks to all our guests here, Pete Smith, Mike Bradley, Andy Meehan, Chris Solo, and thanks to Lawrence Tavis for calling in. Everybody, you've been listening to The Dean Malik Show every Friday at noon on WWDB 860 AM. Tune in next week for another great show. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend.